Welcome to Mikita Gnosis. Today we will look at the origins of the Soviet space program, its successes, its complications, its theories, and of course, its legendary legacy. So without further ado, let's get ready for launch. The path to the stars has mesmerized countless philosophers, writers, and esotericists for thousands of years. However, the pioneers of an actual space exploration were the Soviet scientists and astronauts. Officially, the Soviet space program was born in 1955, when the Soviet Union had started working on the realization of their dream of sending the first ever man-made object into space, and forming a dedicated governmental agency called the Ministerstvo Obshio Mashnastrenia, also simply known as MOM, to realize that dream. However, in reality, that research has started much, much earlier, even before the rise of the communism. In 1903, in a scientific journal called the Naučne Abazrenie, the first ever article about the advanced rocket technology, written by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, has seen the light of day. In the said article, he has seriously proposed the idea of navigating space using a liquid propellant rocket, and even created a theory about its hypothetical flight. Initially, his ideas were not given much attention and were perceived as pure fantasy, until finally in 1912, other like-minded individuals such as Vladimir Rumin and Yakov Perelman have noticed the potential of Tsiolkovsky's ideas, which followed by a significant popularization effort. Here you can see the reconstruction of his early design. Flash forward to the aftermath of the Great October Socialist Revolution, Tsiolkovsky became a member of the Socialist Academy and greatly contributed in theories and initial development in areas such as aviation, aerodynamic sciences, and cosmonautics. He literally worked until the very last days of his life, until he finally passed away in 1935 at the age of 78. As a result of that enthusiasm, the first native Soviet center dedicated to the rocket sciences was established in 1932. However, it didn't last long, as in 1937 the head of the said institution, Mikhail Tukhachevsky, was executed on the charges of being the supporter of Trotsky. After that, the rocket development center was closed down, and all the rocket-based research was stopped indefinitely. The new stimulant to the Soviet interest in reviving its rocket program were the technologies taken from the Germans after the World War II. Being really impressed by the German V2 program and by the recovered documents about its hypothetical future development, Soviets have built an university in Thuringen called Nordhausen. Nordhausen was built in 1946 with the sole purpose of studying, testing and perfecting the German technologies. Their German rocket and the hypothetical space program is also a really exciting topic with some crazy fantastical ideas which I would like to present in a different video. Now, coming back to the Soviet program. The now legendary Sergei Korolev was given the role of the chief engineer of the Nordhausen, the same Korolev who will be regarded as the father of Soviet practical astronautics, who later gave birth to advanced spacecraft such as Putnik 1 and R-7 rocket, as well as being one of the key figures of the Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile program. Nordhausen continued its busy work until 1947. After that, it was officially closed and all of the further research was continued in the mainland USSR. The R-series rockets were born due to the efforts of this university. Sergei Korolev's name was a top-kept secret during the Cold War era. Among the personnel, he was only known and referred to as главный constructor or the chief engineer. That level of secrecy had to be kept in order to minimize assassination and abduction attempts. However, even so, Korolev passed away relatively young, being only 58 years old. Ironically, before his unexpected death, he was heavily invested in his work of sending astronauts to the moon by 1967. His sudden death interrupted and in the long term completely hindered the Soviet implementation of those plans, and for the first time the United States took the lead in the space race by launching their own moon mission in 1969. Before his passing, Korolev was known to be overworking heavily, being almost possessed by his work. His obsession with getting live crew to the moon was contributing to the worsening of his physical health. Some claim that he feared that Khrushchev was using the space program just for the political leverage and might drop it any time it seemed convenient. 
This fear caused him to rush things even more. He was also working on projects to reach Venus and Mars, and it seems that he was in very advanced stages of that development. It's unfortunate that he passed away being so young. However, we should also take into the consideration that he has lived a very difficult life. He was imprisoned for a long time, which most likely contributed to his poor physical condition. Regardless of that, due to his immeasurable successes in the development of the R-7 rocket in 1953, which became the world's first intercontinental missile, he was inspired to implement similar technologies to launch a first man-made satellite into space. And on the 26th of May of the very next year, he has presented his research proposal of launching a satellite with scientific purposes to Dmitry Ustinov, who at that time served as the Central Committee Secretary in charge of the Soviet military industrial complex. The initial design consisted of the round-shaped object with a weight ranging from 2 up to 3 tons, with room up to 2 pilots. However, this risky and expensive venture didn't justify its need, since the Soviet interest regarding the rocket technology at the time was mainly in the development of the nuclear weapons, and as a result his proposal was scrapped. It wasn't until 1955 when the President of the United States of America, Davis Eisenhower, promised to launch a man-made satellite first that the Soviet Union has finally taken real interest in Karolev's proposal. And with most of the research being already complete, the Soviet Union has managed to launch their man-made satellite first. However, the original design was significantly altered, making it much, much smaller, and it did not include any crew on board. This first man-made satellite ended up being just 58 cm in diameter, weighing around 83 kg. And on the 4th of October of 1957, the modified R-7 rocket carried it into the orbit. The name of this satellite was the now legendary Sputnik 1. Sputnik 1 has become such a cultural icon that it even inspired iBot's design from the famous Fallout series. This successful launch has made the impossible possible and served as a pivotal point for the next grand breakthroughs in the space exploration. But that's a story for another time. So, what do you think about the Soviet space program? Do you think that it had essential influence on NASA or the current American space programs? Please let me know in the comments below. So guys, see you in my next video. Remember to stay strong, stay healthy and to never neglect knowledge. Peace out.